So a wonderful afternoon for all of you. You know, it's, it's great to be back here. It's uh, 25 years ago when Alex and I had already the pleasure to do something for Oikos. So uh, my office was astonished, you know, during the running winter semester that I spent a whole day here with you. Uh, but I think that's a very good thing to do. And what I will ask today are some questions about uh, you know, education and management and economics. And I will focus a little bit on uh, management education because education in sustainability, you have a colleague of yours who has done the bachelor at Leuphana, so you get a first hand insight. And the question I will, I will address is, you know, what do you need to do to foster entrepreneurial thinking? Uh, not to become a better technician or only a better understander, but to do something and to change something. And I will take four steps um, to present this to you. Um, unfortunately, business ethics is not sufficient. Uh, because if you look only at ethics, and if you also would only look at law, um, there will be no answer for all the questions you have to address being in a company or working for an NGO. And I will call this area, we want to talk about entrepreneurial responsibility. And how can this be developed? And I will outline why this is important you have three cases of decisions to make. The first one is the case A, a CEO, and there are a lot of examples, who has to resign, insists on the payment of a compensation. Um, so this is a question of ethics. Uh, the case B uh, is a question of law. You know, a market leader buys its closest rival uh, whether it is legal or not is a question of law. It can also easily be uh, done. But the case C is a much more interesting case. Um, the case C is not obvious. Because the case C is a question of balancing conflicting interests and demands. In this case, for example, the creation of value or preserving jobs or ecological sustainability or others. So and the problem is, what can you do that people can make better decisions in the case C? You can also work on case A and B for sure, but the C is the most interesting. Uh, if you look, you know, what is presented by business ethics, um, I think it's not sufficient. Uh, you can take the, all the approaches that is uh, in the German language designed by Hohmann, Karl Hohmann. Uh, it's a kind of functional business ethics. Um, but it's not sufficient because it doesn't address uh, the unclear cases. You can go online with Peter Ulrich. If you are in St. Gallen, you should do this. Uh, he is interested in Lebensdienlichkeit. Uh, but the problem is his proposal to solve conflict of interests is hierarchiefreier discourse. So meaning that you should engage a debate. But normally you don't have the time uh, to have a debate in the in the situation on a 10th October 2005, when you have to present, you know, the engine, uh, the fuel engine at Volkswagen. So we, we have, the, we will see in a couple of years why this happened, but there wasn't any hierarchiefreier discourse at the moment. <laughs> this for sure. Um, and you can also support the more, in the more recent approaches, uh, corporate social responsibility but they have also two problems. The first problem is the people who say this adds value to the company because this is a purely economic argument. It wouldn't be of interest here. And um, the argument is companies do justice to the society since company profit 
from infrastructure, education, public safety, but justice has not to do with politics and law, not with ethics. Ethics does not tell us what is just and what is not. All it might tell us is whether we should act justly or not. Uh, and it cannot do so in the name of justice. So this is the fundamental problem between the individual decision and the broader question of the company. And, you know, and this point is also not solved by uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, you can go f uh, continue further this with uh, what Wettstein here in St. Gallen does these days, but you won't find a solution either. Uh, I can't propose you a solution for sure. We can only see you know, how to address the problem, not to, that you think there would be something new now coming from me. Unfortunately not. So the conclusion about business ethics is I cannot offer a better theoretical concept. We can debate the ones presented here, how to bring business and ethics together. Uh, I do not even know whether there is a way to do so. Uh, but we know at least there would be one way, and this could be working within the education that these problems are at least present and that you get some exercise uh, to handle with them. And this is my thesis uh, for today. What has an entrepreneur to learn? She has to learn to reflect and analyze different values and interests in order to deliberate. Uh, it's very interesting. It's not about creating business models. It's the first question, it's a very fundamental one. How could you bring together different interests to a to a kind of new solution. And the second aspect is uh, she has also to learn to take risk. How to handle with risk. And so my proposal is you can reduce the whole question of education to these two fundamental ideas. And the third one is, uh, university is a good place to do so. There would be other people who would say, just do an apprenticeship or something. I think university is a good place to do so. And uh, for sure, you know, I'm invited here as a president of a university who is trying to do so, so I will present some ideas about it. But, you know, um, so we just started with our freshmen this year. Uh, with the orientation week, and this orientation week was about engage. And what is so interesting, uh, we decided roughly a year ago about the topic, but when you looked in September with Willkommenskultur, this was really the hot issue in German society. And uh, I think, you know, to address problems that are very vibrant ones, is very important so that students are motivated really to invest time and ideas and creativity and bring it f and, and bring it further. So the idea was, you know, for engagement to make proposals, entrepreneurial proposals, how a societal engagement could look like. And for sure, we have seen out of this 110 proposals at the end, that which were presented in short films, a lot of proposals how to deal with refugees. But, you know, the interesting task was, you know, how to bring others to an engagement. So we did a crowdfunding campaign during the orientation week, so it was real stuff to do. It was not just reading about and discussing, discussing but it was, you know, really to do it. And then students have to start with humanities. And this is uh, so about how to learn balancing of interest and risk taking. My fundamental idea here is the answer are the humanities. And you, you there was a major discourse by Hans Ulrich Gumbrecht, Sepp Gumbrecht, 
you know, who is a professor at Stanford and was invited by the Hochschulrektorenkonferenz. But at the end, they didn't know what they have done because he told, uh, he told us how important humanities are and why they aren't well done in Germany any longer. And so it was really interesting. And I uh, can give you a lot of examples uh, why you know, humanities are so important. Just take, think about uh, this, uh, Descartes uh, and you know, the, when you read him, you will following in all the doubts, all we take for granted. You can also have a look at Thomas Kuhn's structure of scientific revolutions. It's another risk-taking adventure. Uh, but you could also look at literature, uh, Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot or other examples. Um, and you can, you, you can test this also with first-year students. We did this already here in St. Gallen uh, in the first semester, and we are still doing uh, doing this in the Leuphana semester in Lüneburg. Because, you know, yo uh, young people, I'm convinced, have to learn to take risks in order to be able to do so later on in life. If you are not trained in risk-taking, you will not be willing to take any risk later on, and if you don't willing to take risks, you will behave as an instrument, instrument in a big machine. So we do this uh, quite fundamentally. Uh, we do this for all students, whatever major they are in, in the first semester, with a comprehensive, uh, a comprehensive structure, uh, starting with orientation week, four modules, and with a conference week, students do out of their first semester. So they do a topic, they choose on, uh, and they will prepare during the first semester to get a format and, uh, and also to, to learn this risk-taking by presenting you know, their ideas to their community, but also to different other experts. You, you can ask you know, her how this feels. Uh, and second, we try to, uh, to have an, a room for risk-taking every semester. Uh, you know, and you can do this from different perspectives and with different, you know, different sources of material. Because these days we know it's not only text-driven, classical literature, but it's also action-oriented or method-oriented because people have different interests. And therefore, you get this idea, you know, how to handle with risk and how to balance interests. It's always around the same, but it can appear from French literature uh, until, uh, you know, questions of business. And if you would sum up what we are doing uh, for this idea, we, we are creating a frame for topics. And I think that's a major difference that you have a frame for the topics and that's a four anchored frame reflecting social norms and values, acquiring research methods to become independent, broadening one's perspective to forget what you've done before, and doing project work, so not only exercising, but experiencing you know, to do some experiments. And if you do this, you have an, a framework for different types of business education. And that's the most interesting part, is that you can uh, study business within different ideas. You can do a classical major in business administration. This is what roughly 250 students are doing at Leuphana. You can do sustainability and combine it with a minor in business administration. There are another, you know, a 100 who are doing this with a minor. You can do the newly designed major international business administration and entrepreneurship, where we ask, you know, what would be an interesting curriculum uh, to start with? And uh, so we have the first student cohort of 35 students 
who started this fall with this new, newly designed management program. It's oriented towards public value, uh, takes the ideas of Peter Drucker, is very international, and it's in the doing mode, meaning that students become an entrepreneur. And there is a fourth option, which is a very interesting one. We have a Studium Individuale, where the task is for all students to design their proper curriculum in the first semester, and then they can do their curriculum. And this can be a curriculum towards management and economics. It can do a lot of other stuff, but it can also be. So the interesting point is there are four options within one university to study in this field, and they are quite different. And I have a last, a last question. You know, that's a question about the digital age. Uh, would this idea change knowing that you can have all information online and that you could study, you know, with Coursera and Edix uh, in the be best business school classes you can get? And our answer is no. That's the reason why we, why we are investing on campus. Uh, we are just uh, building, you know, a construction that allows you, as does this forum here, uh, to come together and to meet and to have different formats of teaching and learning, of researching, and uh, it will also serve as a city hall. So this will be a point that brings people together. And why do we think this is important? Um, because if you look at the time when the railway was invented, people thought, you know, now you can live in the countryside, not in the agglomeration, agglomeration, but really in the countryside. But do people go there? No. They are running to the city, to a central place. When there's a phone came over, one said, you know, now you have distance, it's no problem. But people still moved to the city, at least the creative ones. And now you have the internet. And what do we see at the moment? People are moving towards the city, so towards a place where you can exchange ideas. And that's the reason why a university is also a place to exchange ideas. That's the reason why you need a kind of campus that can allow you for debating and for creativity. And that's the reason why in the digital the digital time, you have to invest in brick and mortar as long as it's so interesting that it can become a central place. And that's the reason why we are doing this, because we think, you know, for the kind of evaluating different interests and risk-taking, you need a place to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.